Hey Optimancers, Chris here. Not long ago, we got a new adventure path in Dungeons & Dragons called Wild Beyond the Witchlight. One of the things of interest to players who may not be playing in that adventure path is there were some new character options. One of the character options I thought was particularly interesting is a new race called the Herongon. They provide some unique features that I think deserve a little bit of a spotlight in a video. So we will be looking at the Herongon race today and why you might want to consider playing this race. Patreon plug time. If you would like to support this channel, you can do so through Patreon. There is a link in the video description. Patrons get all kinds of stuff. Any patron gets to see these videos early, usually a couple weeks, and they get to see these videos without the YouTube ads. Mid-level patrons get uh, an exclusive Discord channel on my Discord server, and my top-level patrons get to join me for one-shots of D&D every month. Today I want to thank these top-level patrons. Jad Zan, John Matera, Joseph Robido, Joseph Van Horn, Josh Davis, Joshua Samuel Lappel, Justin Beddington, Carl Ryder, Underhill, and Kurt G. Thank you all so much for your support. Let's get going. Herongons originated in the Feywild, where they spoke Sylvan and embodied the spirit of freedom and travel. In time, these rabbit folk hopped out of their worlds, bringing the Fey realm's exuberance with them and learning new languages as they went. Herongons are bipedal, with the characteristic long feet of the rabbits they resemble and fur in a variety of colors. They share the keen senses and powerful legs of leprine creatures and are full of energy, like a wound-up spring. Herongons are blessed with a little Fey luck, and they often find themselves a few fortunate feet away from dangers during adventures. Herongons have been introduced since the relatively newer changes to uh, how races are introduced in D&D, so they can either choose to increase one ability score by two and another by one, or they can increase three ability scores by one. Secondly, they will be able to read and write common, plus they will get one other language of their choice that the DM agrees is appropriate for the character. The lifespan of a Herongon will be similar to that of a human. So the Herongon traits, there's not too many, so we'll just go through them quickly. First off, you are a humanoid. When it comes to size, you can choose to be medium or small. The base walking speed, 30 feet. And then this is kind of the special stuff that a Herongon gets. First, they get the hair trigger. You can add your proficiency bonus to your initiative rolls. Second, you get the leprine senses. You have proficiency in the perception skill. Third, we get lucky footwork. When you fail a dexterity saving throw, you can use your reaction to roll a d4 and add it to the save, potentially turning the failure into a success. You can't use this reaction if you're prone or your speed is zero. And finally, we get rabbit hop. As a bonus action, you can jump a number of feet equal to five times your proficiency bonus without provoking opportunity attacks. You can only use this trait if your speed is greater than zero. You can use it a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, and you regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. When this race was first published, there was a lot of question as to how Rabbit Hop worked. Uh, the most common question I heard was, does it use part of your own movement? My gut instinct from the very beginning was that since it uses your bonus action, I figured it was separate from your base movement. But we have had a new sage advice that does answer some rabbit hop questions. When a herongon uses rabbit hop, does the trait's jump expand movement? The rabbit hop trait lets a herongon jump as a bonus action, and that jump doesn't consume any of the herongon's normal movement. That fact is why the trait has a limited number of uses between long rests. If you compare the wording of rabbit hop to the wording of the long and high jump rules in the player's handbook, you'll see those rules explicitly expand movement, whereas Rabbit Hop doesn't. So most of that is just explaining how we should have known to begin with, but uh, essentially it confirms Rabbit Hop does not expand your movement. Second question, is Rabbit Hop a high jump or a long jump? The jump of a Rabbit Hop is neither a high jump nor a long jump. If it were either, the text would say so. Now I kind of question if they understood the question. Because I think the question is, so if I have a rabbit hop where I can jump 15 feet, can I jump 15 feet straight up? 
And I don't know that this answered that, but I think the answer is yes. I think that you can jump in any direction you want. What this does tell us is we can ignore the normal mechanics of long jumps and high jumps here. The next question was, does the jump spell benefit Rabbit Hop? And this answer kind of surprised me. Yes, the jump spell can affect the jump distance of Rabbit Hop. If you cast a spell on a Heron Gone, enjoy the Magnificent Leaps. So that is kind of interesting, and it makes a reevaluation of the jump spell kind of necessary in the case of the Heron Gone. And finally, are you required to jump the full distance of a Rabbit Hop? You don't have to jump the full distance of a Rabbit Hop when you use it. We will clarify that intent in the future printings of the Rabbit Hop trait. So they're basically acknowledging that the way it's written, it sounds like you would need to use the full distance, but the intent is you can choose your distance. Okay, so that's how Rabbit Hop works. Let's discuss why this is a pretty good race. Uh, well, first off, Leprine Senses, let's just acknowledge the perception skill is a handy skill to have. So if you're going to get an additional skill, you would want it to be a skill that you're probably going to take anyway. This is one of those skills. And so basically, you play a Heron Gone, you get an extra skill. That's not a huge deal. Lots and lots of races in the game give you additional skills. Some of them give you multiple additional skills, but I'll take an extra skill. Then we get Lucky Footwork. There's no limit on the number of uses here, which I agree with. I mean, I don't think if you had limited uses, you would likely expend them all. I don't think this is going to come up that often. But... If that's the case, then why give you another resource that you have to keep track of? So this is okay, but I don't think it's that great. Uh, first off, D4 isn't a huge bonus. Probably looking at maybe equivalent to a plus two deck save, but it's really not equivalent to a plus two deck save because you have to use your reaction in order to use this. So your reaction needs to be available. Also, if you're something like a war mage that can use a reaction to gain a bonus to saving throws, this can't stack with that since you only have one reaction. And then there's the limit that if you're prone or your speed is zero, you can't use this. So this isn't as good as, say, a plus two bonus to saving throws. But you know what? Deck saves are reasonably common. Uh, so once in a while, you're going to fail one by four or less. And when you do, if you have your reaction available, the chance to turn that failure into success probably worth your reaction. So I think this is okay. I don't think it's fantastic. So Leprine Senses, Lucky Footwork, I think they're both okay. I don't think either of them are huge. Neither of them particularly drag me to wanting to play a Heron Gone. So I talked about those first. Let's talk about the ones that are really good. First, let's talk about the Rabbit Hop itself. This is, I think, the most interesting feature of the Heron Gone, though I'm not convinced it's the most powerful. So first off, how far is the jump? Well, at first level, it's 10 feet. At 20th level, it's 30 feet. So eventually, it will be as much movement as your base movement speed. Uh, and again, this does not provoke opportunity attacks and does not use your regular movement. Now, because you can only do it if your speed is greater than zero, that means if you're grappled, then you won't be able to use Rabbit Hop to escape it. So if I want to evaluate how good this is, well, it essentially could replace a disengage, right? Since it doesn't provoke opportunity attacks, we could use this instead of using a disengage action. And in this case, we can do it as a bonus action. Second thing is it's increasing our movement. So in a lot of cases, we could use this to just replace a dash action. Uh, that's also an action. This is a bonus action. Now, if we look at something like a rogue, a rogue can use cunning action to do a bonus action disengage or they can use their bonus action for a bonus action dash. This kind of combines those. Now, we're not getting probably as much movement as a dash until very high level, but with the jump spell, that might be different. We'll talk about that in a bit. But overall, I think it's kind of combining those two things. So in some ways, I think this is better than cutting action. And then we have monks who can use step of the wind to do a bonus action, disengage or dash. And once again, they can't do both with the same bonus action. In the case of Monk, they're also expending key. So we get around that as well. So if I'm evaluating this, uh, I'm seeing that as maybe a little bit better than cutting action, though we can't do a hide with it. 
but we can also jump upwards or over things. So there's some added utility here as well. Overall, pretty strong feature, just on its own. And then we need to look at the jump spell. So jump is a first level spell. It does not use concentration and it lasts a minute. When you touch a creature, the creature's jump distance is tripled until the spell ends. And now we've been told that this will work on Rabbit Hop. So how dramatic does this become? Well, at first level, our 10-foot jump would become a 30-foot jump. But the scaling here is pretty dramatic. By fifth level, we're talking about a 45-foot jump. And by 17th level, now we're talking about a 90-foot jump as a bonus action. To compare, a 17th level monk has a plus 25 bonus to movement speed, and then they could dash as a bonus action. So their bonus action might add 55 feet to their movement. This jump could add 90 feet, plus it doesn't provoke attacks of opportunity. So jump plus the heron gone hop is pretty dramatic. I would not be expending valuable spell slots at level one to be casting jump on a heron gone, but at higher levels, first level spell slot isn't such a big resource anymore. I think the part of this combination that's always going to be a challenge though, is that jump just doesn't have a good duration. So it's going to be difficult to precast for a lot of combat situations. So rabbit hop I think really adds to maneuverability and maneuverability can be very handy for a lot of different kinds of characters. And I think on any character, just the ability to get a free disengage is useful just on that. And this is mechanically, technically not a disengage, but it's going to accomplish the exact same thing. And then what do I think is the absolute best thing here? You can add your proficiency bonus to initiative rolls. This is the only race you can pick that gets a bonus to initiative rolls. Now, if we're going to look at the various ways we can boost initiative, there are a lot of them. Uh, so there's feats like alert, there's subclass features like we get with Twilight Clerics or War Mages or Chronergist Wizards. Uh, there are spells we can use like Gift of Alacrity. Spells like the Guidance Spell technically should apply to initiative as well. And we can apply multiple modifiers to our initiative, but one modifier we've never had before is a racial modifier. So now with a racial modifier, that just gives a Heron Gone a bonus that could stack with other bonuses to create a very good initiative score. Or, if you don't do anything else to boost your initiative score, we can pretty much count on our Heron Gone having a decent initiative, and it, with scaling of level, it will eventually become a pretty good initiative, regardless of anything else we do with that build. So it's basically free initiative built in. Now, we could take a Variant Human and take the Alert feat, and then we would have good initiative built into that as well. But here we have the hair trigger plus the rabbit hop. That makes a pretty nice combination that I think is between the two of them and probably at least as strong as a feat. So if you're an X character, you want them to have a very good initiative, consider Heron Gone. If you want them to have free disengaging, consider the Heron Gone. And if you want them to have really good maneuverability, consider the Heron Gone. It's going to be reasonably good at all three of those. Thus, I think it's a pretty worthy addition to optimized builds in D&D, and I expect we're going to start seeing Heron Gone included in optimized builds. I know my next build is going to use Heron Gone. That's why you're seeing this video today. And it isn't even a build that really builds around what the Heron Gone can do. It's just Rabbit Hop plus the initiative bonus. They just kind of work nicely on a lot of builds. What do you think of the Heron Gone? Let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, until next time, I'm going to sit back, relax, and have some fun. D&Ds for everyone. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you soon.